I'm attempting to repair and restore this Madass Vintage Mechanical Calculator. If you've been watching the previous videos then you'll know that I've got it pretty much working except for the fact that the automatic division won't terminate. It'll go through the entire process and work out the correct value but then it continuously cycles around and doesn't um, conclude the, the operation. It just gets to the last column and just cycles around indefinitely. I think I pinned it down to an issue with the uh, latching mechanism over here. And I think I've kind of figured out a way to make it work. And uh, I thought what I'll do is I'll give a demonstration as to what I think it's supposed to do and then we'll zoom in and I'll show you what I've actually found and what I've actually done to make it work. So firstly I'll zero the top number and the middle number and if you recall we set the number we want to divide uh, in the top row, the number we want to divide by in the uh, bottom row. Um, I've got the front cover off of course so we can work on it but uh, I've got the uh, slides effectively selecting a number. I don't know what the number is but uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, and the result will be in the centre number and the remainder will be in the top number once the operation is finished. So we'll do just a couple of columns. So I'll put the machine into the uh, last column but one. We'll select one followed by a, a number of zeros. The position of the decimal point the, for this isn't really important. Normally you'd indicate that with the slides which aren't currently fitted. Um, but as long as we've selected a sensible number then it shouldn't take too long to go through the process and we should see the overall operation of the machine. What I need to do is just hold this lever in the kind of home position where it would normally be and I'll explain this in a bit more detail later. What I can now do is press the plunger down. That would normally start the motor and start this rotating uh, but of course I'll have to rotate it by hand for this demonstration. So I'll press the plunger down and we've now captured the, the gooseneck that's on the left hand side of the machine so it's locked it into the divide mode. I'll start to rotate the machine and the top number is um, having the value in the bottom number subtracted on each cycle and at some point it will overflow. So that's now overflowing. You'll notice the indicator wheel will advance to 2 which it has done. It will now recover from the underflow by adding the bottom number back onto the top number, which it has done, and then it will progress the indicator wheel to one and advance the carriage, which it has done. So we're now in the final uh, column. So what should happen now is it should keep subtracting the number from what's left of the number in the top row until we get an underflow at which point again the indicator wheel should rotate but this time it should latch this plate up to allow the machine to terminate the operation. So we're now getting the uh, underflow. This has now been latched up. If I carry on rotating the machine has now finished the cycle and now this gear is free to rotate so it's finished the uh, division. We've got the remainder showing in the top and the result in the bottom. The numbers are actually correct but um, it's kind of irrelevant. It's, I'm just trying to get the end of uh, cycle operation to work. And it will stay latched in this position now so it won't accept any more division operations until we reset the carriage which is exactly what it's supposed to do. So if I tear the carriage across you'll see this plate release which it has done. So I'll zoom us in and I'll show you what I found with this. It's it kind of one of those things that um, it wasn't one thing, it was a combination of things. I haven't got the final solution here yet but I just wanted to show you what I found. So we'll get the camera moved in and uh, we'll have a look. Okay, so since the last video what I did, I spent some time looking for documents uh, any information for this to see if I could find a drawing for it. But I couldn't find anything on this particular machine at all. So I decided I had two options. I could either shelve the project and not complete it or I could try and investigate what's going on and come up with some solution which is what I decided to do. But I didn't want to modify the machine. I wanted to try and get it working as it's intended. 
and so if I slide the carriage out of the way you'll notice that nothing appears to have changed and that's kind of what I was hoping for. What I found was when I took some of the parts out and looked at them under a microscope there were some witness marks on certain components. Now in particular this is the lever for the manual um, division cancel and I noticed this end uh, part had been bent up quite a bit and it obviously wasn't like it from the factory because there were a lot of kind of tool marks and plier marks and gouges on it so it's like someone's had a go at this. And looking at it in more detail I think what's happened with this machine is someone's uh, it stopped working at some point and someone's kind of walked it away from the correct solution by bending one thing and that didn't work so they did something else and um, started hammering it and all sorts. Uh, so I think what happened uh, initially is the plate here, I think this raised section is supposed to be a return, I think it's supposed to extend to the right by a couple of millimetres, uh, but it's been snapped off or worn off at some point. And in response to that, to try and get it working, somebody's had uh, sort of various attempts at modifying various parts and they've bent various bits and um, what I've been doing is trying to return the parts to what seems a far more logical way for it to work. This is kind of a, a Occam's razor situation where rather than adding more complexity to get it to work I was trying to undo things that didn't seem to make a lot of sense so in the design uh, I did, it didn't make sense for this to be kind of bent and curved so I assumed it's supposed to be straight. I also noticed, and you can perhaps see it, that there's significant wear on this corner. And bear in mind this is a motorised machine so that any operations will have to um, happen at a fairly high speed otherwise it won't work, so long movements of parts is not really uh, feasible for latches. Uh, so looking at this and then looking back at the mechanism I realised that what somebody had done is, um, if you recall seeing this part taken out, there are two sections of it down here, one's where the cam operates and one's a recess that allows the cam to effectively do nothing but that also doubles up where this lever sits, this sits down in here just to the left of where the cam would normally be and um, I realise what somebody had done is bent this end lever away uh, I'm assuming in an attempt to get this to work somehow and that meant this had to be bent for the manual cancel to work so I straightened this out, straightened this out, put this back in and then started looking at the operation to see what was going on. I had to do quite a lot of work on this gooseneck at the end, it wasn't properly capturing this plate and then it wasn't releasing it. There's a lot of gouges in here as well which I think is um, it's not normal wear, I think it's like someone's been hitting it again with a hammer so I cleaned it up as best I could but had to do quite a lot of work to the gooseneck to get it to work smoothly. Uh, once I've done that I realised that when this carriage comes across and pushes on here, I've made a mark on here as to where it goes to, where it went to, which was there, sorry, it was there, and it's not far enough for the machine to operate properly. So when I started looking at this and figuring out what was causing the wear on the corner of this lever, I realised there must have been this. So if you push this further across so it stops, I think I mentioned this in the previous video, against the side of this plate, um, then what will happen is because of the geometry and where this pivot is, if you then push this up, it will cause this corner of this plate to latch behind the corner on the release plate. So if I do that just manually, you see it pops across and then it's latched. So if this was still being held over, this is now latched and it won't come back down again until you move the carriage, which is what the machine is supposed to do. So I think uh, in response to trying to get it to work, this had all been messed with. To get it to work, all I had to do uh, was fit a washer on the shaft uh, between the shoulder and the plate and that's just to take up the wear in this shaft. I think it was just warm and it, it was, this is rocking about and um, this was flopping around instead of operating smoothly. But then to get this to move far enough across I didn't want to have to remake this plate. So what I did, this is just a temporary measure at the moment, 
is the screw that sat in here and protruded through is what pushed this across. So all I've done is countersunk screw, all I've done is taken the screw out and screw it in from the bottom. And now because the head is at the bottom rather than the shaft of the screw, it's bigger and that causes the plate to be pushed across about half a millimetre further. And that's uh, just enough to get the machine to operate correctly, so I need to make a, a small a pad block or something to go on the underside of here that presses against this and that's uh, instead of there being a return on this uh, plate. Uh, but as you can see it works, it's just uh, getting this to move across to the right position, it wasn't going far enough, and then uh, getting these parts down here uh, bent back into their proper shape. It now operates uh, correctly, it does the division correctly, it terminates the division all the numbers on the number wheel show correctly. The only thing left to resolve is um, the spring for this. Now, I'm starting to think that it doesn't need one. I think it might be this plate that causes it to spring. Um, but what I'm probably going to do is, uh, th there was no knob with this, and it protrudes through the front panel. So what I'm probably going to do is um, 3D print a knob or make one out of brass that comes through and fit a spring underneath it so this lever has been pulled up to the underside so where the shoulder is um, it will be pulled up to its stop position in a reliable manner rather than just kind of floating about. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be but um, it will certainly make it work and the only other thing then is I need to make up another one of these guides uh, because the centre one is missing and then I can uh, reassemble and start doing some full tests. So it seems to be a combination of a damaged component, various parts had been bent out of shape and other parts were just worn. So having corrected that it now does, does at least seem to be operating and I haven't had to modify it which is the main thing I was trying to avoid. I haven't had to make up any uh, new parts, the only part I'll need to make is the uh, pad block for the uh, end of carriage uh, stop uh, and the rest of it I think is going to be um, fairly standard. Uh, I've obviously cleaned up some of the parts and um, ground them back uh, uh, flush and I had to extend the gooseneck and uh, regrind that but um, it's still the original one, it's just needed tidying up uh, but it's now all working reliably so um, as I say, if anyone's got any information on this, if you know how these are supposed to work, then please leave a comment. But um, I do seem to be getting fairly close now to having this working.